Hey, Wentz, are you with me? Yeah, I'm, I'm with you. Hey, guys, uh, I'm joined here today not only for the cast, but also for the pregame by Winter. You may have seen him playing for Orange, as well as Invasion and Nine, or just Natural Nine, in the past. But Winter, uh, I actually have the Chinese stream muted for the moment. Uh, maybe I'll put it on with the volume quietly. But yeah, we're just catching up on yesterday's G League action for Love versus DK. And I think the first thing I want to ask you, were you surprised by the result? For Love convincingly 2-0 DK. Um, not really surprised though, because DK they haven't been in top form as of late. We were playing against them before the Asia, I mean me and N9, and they weren't really playing up to their standard as I know. Well, I actually missed your answer there, <laughs> I'm back now. Um, sorry about that, but oh. uh, so what did you, I guess along those lines, so DK they lose that match and this group is going to be really tough for them now. They have to play LGD International and LGD China, who are two of the stronger teams in the group. It's entirely possible they might get knocked out and not even have a chance at moving on to the playoffs. Yeah, they haven't been playing very well as of late, and especially ROTK, he has been underperforming in quite a number of games, which has contributed to one of the factors that they have been slumping a lot in their recent results. Yeah, I mean, it's, some, it's something that, you know, people, it, it's kind of a touchy subject for a lot of people to blame a, a one player for mistakes, but he has been getting picked off a lot. We saw him dying bottomed as Bounty Hunter. Then he, as soon as he respawns, he TPs back in, immediately dies again. And it was a pretty good kill lane, but a little bit sloppy from him. And that's something that has hurt DK a bit. Uh, it's, it's tough, though. Four Love also did play the match pretty well. Yeah, actually, I didn't catch the match, but what I heard from my friends that... The game was uh, very well played by For Love as well. Yeah, uh, and and they're one and zero in the group now. So For Love, they have a decent shot at advancing. For anyone who's not familiar with the format, it's a four-team group. It's DK, For Love, and then both LGDs, and only the top three teams move on. So if you lose even two matches, you're all but eliminated, and that unless there's a three-way tie uh, for th for second place, which is something that can happen in these groups, but. I believe, but it's rather unusual. So we're seeing the highlights right now from 4Love versus DK. Uh, I'll actually link you the stream in case you're not watching it uh, live now, as I think the lobby will be underway. So sorry, guys, just one sec. I just have to get into the lobby. And then, uh, Winter, can you move over to the other broadcaster channel slot? Which one? Just, uh, oh, okay. just leave the channel and then rejoin in a second. Okay, so, yeah, we're in the game, guys. It should be starting, hopefully, pretty soon. LGD China versus LGD International, and whoever wins this match, it's... I mean, these are two of the tougher teams in the group. They've also played against each other a lot. I'm curious, have you scrimmed versus either of these teams much recently? Do you have any sort of predictions or thoughts about the upcoming match? Uh, we have scrimmed against LGD in for, like, around five to six games with M9. And they really are getting better and better as as they spend more time together in China training up. But we haven't played with LGD China be before, as of late. Yeah, LGD China, they've looked very strong as of late. And I think the one thing that's really been interesting about them is it's always been with, it seems like the Xiao Wei Beastmaster, just every game is just absolutely crushing. Like he's winning his lane almost every single game. He's controlling the runes. And then even, the, even when the enemy team gets trades some kills, it's always 4v5. It's always just Silar farming away. So. It pretty much just morphs into a four protect one. There are even games where Silar got shut down early on, uh, and then later on in the game was able to just catch up, and w was up against offensive tri lanes and still managed to have like an 18, 20 minute relic. So, LGD China has been looking really strong coming into this match. Yeah, I have to agree that Xiao, Xiao Eight is really, really the uh, backbone of the team. He does very well with heroes like Beastmaster, Night Stalker, controlling the game, creating space for. Sila to farm, even when he's a lot behind at the start, but when Xiaowei has a good start for LGD, he will definitely create a lot of room later on for Sila to farm up. So in my opinion, the one of the key ways to take down LGD CN is to shut down Xiaowei at the early phase before he can create a lot of... So, so how specifically would you do that? Is it smoke ganks? Is it just picking like lane dominators mid? Like, What exactly would you do to try and shut him down? What we did in Orange before was always picking a very strong mid hero like Queen of Pain or Lanaya to lane up against his Night Stalker or Beastmaster to put him as far as behind at the early stage as possible so that we were able to delay him giving support to the other lanes. 
I, I'm curious to see. I don't LGD International. I think they have run the Queen of Pain uh, in a game that I've cast. And, and they're an interesting team to go up against LGD China because in some ways they're even more aggressive and both of these teams are favoring a lot of the same heroes. Heroes like the Beastmaster, the Night Stalker, um, and, and Luna. That's a big one for LGD International. I'm not sure how well the Luna really matches up against Lone Druid though. The bear can tank a lot of Eclipse damage. He's very naturally hard to bring down anyway and is a pretty similar late game if not a bit stronger and seems to require a bit less farm but I mean... What are some of the key heroes in this matchup, aside from Xiao Wei's heroes and whatever they want to counter him with mid? Like, what would you have your eyes on in this draft? Uh, I would think that with the recent right, uh, popular Sila Bear and Luna, uh, both of the both of the teams would be trying their best to get on these two heroes definitely for their core carry. For as for Sila Bear, I think he would be more preferred by LGD China. As for LGD International, they would prefer Luna. If, the, if those heroes are banned, which is possible, we also we saw LGD China first pick, or no, they didn't first pick the Lone Druid, uh, it was DK who first picked it, but it's a hero that has been close to that first pick status, if not ban worthy. Uh, let's say either of those is banned, like what's the next level of carries they go for, or if they don't go for like a hard carry kind of lineup, what are some of the other strategies uh, you think we might see? I think for LGD China, it would always be one safe carry, for sure. For LGD in, I think they have been running sort of five men stick carries. Carries that are really good for team battles like Faceless Void. Or if they don't get Luna, they would most likely get Faceless Void. Yeah, uh, and the Faceless Void, LGD International. Uh, once in a while, we have seen LGD trying to go offensive tri-lane. And that's something where Void, he really needs strong support. So then it turns to the supports. And uh, for these teams, Keeper of the Light, obviously one of their favorite supports, along with the Nyx Assassin. And Nyx Assassin is a hero that we've seen getting a lot of ban lately. What do you think about this hero? Xiaowate has said he's pretty much a must-pick, must-ban. Do you agree with that? Uh, and going into this match, do you expect to see him given that treatment? Yeah, and is really very good in terms of laning phase. And the way he transitions into the mid phase and late game as well, it's really a very strong overall. During the mid phase and early phases, you basically force the enemy supports to get a lot of sentry wards or even a gem. And they have to spend a lot of their gold on it to uh, prevent gangs from the NA. And during the mid, uh, mid phase as well, he, Spike Carapace contributes a lot to team fights as, to, be dis to create some decisive clashes. Yeah. And during the late, late game as well, when he gets up a dagger, can be a very useful engager as well. Yeah, he gives you a lot of burst damage, and I, I think, you know, you made two key points. The first one and the biggest one is, once the Nyx Assassin hits level 6, the supports are either playing very defensively, uh, meaning grouping up or just sitting at the towers, uh, or they have sentry wards. Those are the two options, or probably they're dying if that's not the case. Uh, so it's something that puts attacks them. The other big point that you made is he gives you so much stun late game. It's a pretty low cooldown and a long duration stun, as we actually see on the LGD China stream, uh, or the Chinese stream, rather. We see LGD International being introduced. It's PyCat here. Uh, I think we were just shown Misery. Uh, and now switching over to LGD China. So uh, you've actually played a G League. You played there last season. I think it was last season yeah. for Orange. Can yeah, you... last, last season. It was a Dota 1 event. Can you talk to us a little bit about the environment there? The, you know, what is it like playing in front of the Chinese crowd? Uh, although I think it's more of a studio for these early matches, not really a big crowd, so right? We, but... we, we, we played at a, basically a TV station. Is, what was that like? I mean, that's something that I think, you know, most Dota players haven't had that experience. They're usually playing from home or they're going to big LAN tournaments like SMM, like the Asia. How was that? Well, I think it was something very new for me because we, most of our members, actually all of us, we have never had such experience, even Mushi. It was actually pretty fun because at the start of each match, they would make all uh, one, the team captain for both teams to say some really nasty words <laughs> for the opponents, it's sort of like a taunt. <laughs> they want both of the teams to taunt each other. Really? Well, basically in Mandarin, <laughs> yeah. I... And, uh, and for the first match when we were doing it, we were pretty, I felt pretty awkward with it. And I said something like, we will crush you in some Malaysian gang style and everyone was laughing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I know RTK is infamous for his trash talk, so I imagine he had no problem doing that. Uh, I'm not really sure what he said, but because our group actually we had uh, Nirvana CN at that point of time, Tongfu, and we had LGD. We didn't have DK in our group. 
Wow, LGD International, they they got some swag on. And I mean, you, you know, you talked about it being a TV production. That's what we're seeing is, you know, the players actually having makeup done, their hair is being done. Like, they want these players to look good. They're representing the product for G League. And, I mean, hey, let's give them credit. They clean up pretty well. Uh, did they yeah. have that for you when you went there, all the makeup oh, and all that extra stuff? No, the, the last time we didn't have makeup. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I actually don't know. I think they put makeup on. I know they were like messy with their hair and stuff, and you know you can't show up looking shaggy or un untrimmed. That's for sure. Yeah, they want everything to look really good. So uh, we've s sort of got a preview of both of the teams. LGD International have been living and training in the team house with LGD China. I have to ask you: Did you watch the GEST Dota 2 Challenge? Yeah, I did. I did catch all the games. So what did you think about the matchup between LGD China and LGD International? Now, obviously, it was a long day for them all. Actually, ooh, they're showing something pretty cool on the stream, which... Uh, can you actually translate this? I, do you see what's up on the Chinese stream right now? Yeah, I'm, I'm seeing it. The first one on the top, I'll start from the top. Uh, it means this general... Is, it's, basically, it's basically like a rating of their different skills, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. First one on the top is talking about how they make how they make team decisions. Eight points. The one on the right, uh, which is their drafting phase, seven points. And the one on the lower right, it is their laning phase, seven points as well. Oh, they oh, took it away. Oh, yeah, I didn't catch the last <laughs> two. All right, well, let's keep on going around. So, what's the bottom one? The bottom one is uh, wait. I'm having trouble reading this. It's a bit blur. Can I'm not sure about the I'm not sure about the last one, but the one on seven o'clock is personal skill, personal individual skill, seven points for LGD in, and the the one on the left hand, the top uh, 11, 11 o'clock right. is team fight team fight capabilities. Yeah, I, I mean, as we looked at those, I think the overall assessment was both teams are very even. That's well, uh, it seems like yeah, that's very, what the Chinese fans. Uh, or not the, the not the fans, but that's what Gamefly expects. It's a quite an even match, and that goes back to the GEST challenge where it was really close between these two teams. Yeah, but in my opinion, that I think that LGD in they have slightly advantage in the laning phase because I think that G and Brax on the off lane, if they do get the solo one v one, they would have a slight advantage over their opponents. And it's it's been it's been Pycat often playing that solo 1v1 as a hard carry, but then they run an offensive tri-lane to complement it and a strong solo mid for G. Uh, so it's often PyCat doing that. They, We haven't seen as much of like a traditional lineup with a true off-lane solo and then a safe lane, dual lane, or tri-lane. You know, they don't pick junglers too often either. Well, actually they do. Uh, Misery likes to play a lot of Enchantress and Chen. Yeah, uh, only Misery, uh, only LGD International plays it. LGD CN, they don't play any Wooders. They're now introducing the players on the stream. We have DD, or SC is this. Man, why do they change their name so much? Can you shut it? Uh, Silar, uh, now being introduced. We're not seeing that anti-mage anymore because, well, he's fallen out of favor quite a bit. Like you said, it seems like the carries that can offer team fight are more important right now. Yeah, it's basically they've changed the patches into giving more rewards when you win a team fight. So having a team fight. Uh, late game carry with some sort of AOE control is very important now, like uh, Faces Void or Luna. They both have very good ultimates to contribute into team fight. Right. Like they, they, just, they make your teams a lot stronger when they're five manning. That's something like an anti mage does. And, uh, it, it's, it's something DK has really struggled with. We saw that yesterday that they're still sort of stuck in the old patch mindset, and maybe that's just burning being used to it. I'm not sure why, but L both LGD squads have, b by contrast, looked very comfortable. I actually see Queen of Pain and Sven being shown as Shawit's signature uh, heroes. We haven't really seen these from him much as of late. Yeah, I think anti match could still be picked where most of the Chinese teams in screens, we found out that they do like to leave the Darkseer in the pool, and they would then pick anti match to let anti match solo against the Darkseer. Uh, the last one was decision-making, apparently. I guess they're talking about the Pentagon. Uh, Yao, Yao. This is a, this is one of the interesting things about LGD China. In the G1 League, we saw with the new patch, they were struggling a lot at first, and we saw them trying to run a lot of old picks like that Invoker we're seeing as a signature hero, but they've adapted, and I'm surprised they didn't have the Magnus up, because that's really been Yao's number one hero. Maybe they expect it to just be banned, which, hey, is pretty likely. Now PyCat yeah. getting introduced. Yeah, you're right. His Magnus is really very won a lot of fights single-handedly with his reverse polarity for his team. 
anti-mage on PyCat signature heroes, but again, not something we've seen. I, I think these are more just signature heroes over, over their, you know, historically speaking, but not necessarily in the current patch. God kill them all, or G. Uh, he, <laughs> there's a funny story about him, which is that 1437 says that G has a really bad win rate in SEA servers because he wa he's used to North American European. He likes to mess around a bit more, but SEA is very tryhard. It's very serious, and he gets mad when he pubs. Yeah, actually, I, <laughs> I have played against him on Smurfs a lot of times as well. <laughs> Does he get mad he, at you? Yeah, then he just gets, like, type all chat and say, stop trying so hard, stuff like that. <laughs> That's great. Misery was just introduced. And Misery, he, he's used, he was playing that two position for CLG. Now he's in the four role, and it's something he's really adapted to well. Uh, I got to say, Misery... One of the most versatile players, really, in the scene in general. He's been around for a long time, and he said in some ways he kind of prefers that four position because he likes the challenge of trying to do more with less. Um, well, I, in my opinion, that every role has their own challenges, but it's up to personal preference which one you're more comfortable with. And it also comes down to which role does your team need you to play and which role that you, everyone works better with each other. And they did wrap up the introductions there. We saw Brax being introduced last. Brax, I'm not sure how familiar you are with him, but he's a bit of an unknown player to a lot of people. Uh, had some success with Quantic uh, in sort of their dying, their dying days. He was one of their best players, I think. Uh, and what ended up making the trip to China very young compared to a lot of the other players. Not as experienced, but very, very talented. And I think one of the most interesting heroes he likes to play, we saw it there, it's that clockwork, which, would you believe it, they sometimes run clockwork in a tri-lane. The one we saw was Shadow Demon, Lina, and Clockwork, and Shadow Demon disrupts you, then the new five-second cogs hold you in place, and Light Strike Array and Dragon Slave provide the burst damage. So it's kind of odd, but LGD International have shown some unusual picks. Yeah, they actually did pick that a couple of times against us, against us in our screams. It was, we really didn't expect it as well, because they did a tri-lane with the clockwork. And he was surprisingly very strong in the lane because of the new cogs. Yeah, the new cogs are really good. And wow, look at the vote. The votes, 91% for LGD China, 9% for LGD International. Now, yesterday, it was a little bit worse. It was 95% for DK, 5% for Four Love. I got to say, LGD China sh maybe have the slight edge, just they're veterans, they're on their home turf. They've been together longer as a team, but... I think that's putting it a little bit extreme. I think the Chinese fans may be showing uh, some of their fanboy tendencies there. Yeah, I think this match would be a very exciting match, and I would rate the favorites as 50 to 50. Both teams have been playing very well as of late. Probably maybe LGD China has another 10% advantage because they are more experienced as a team compared to their opponents. If you had to put your money on a team, who would it be? What do you think the series score will be? Like, let, let's say you're betting your family fortune. Who, would you, who do you bet it on? <laughs> I would probably bet on LGD CNS. They are the more stable team and they have more, much more LAN experience together. And LAN is something, LAN experience is something very important. As on LAN, there's always certain things that might change a cert certain player's decision. And they, they, they do have what it takes, all the LAN experience, to actually win this series. Yeah. None. I mean, the nice thing for Chinese players is they've gotten to play in more lands than, well, most Westerners. There's some European players who have been around for ages, you know, players like PyCat and Misery, who have that experience. But across the board, uh, even 1437 is a bit newer to top-level competitive play than, you know, some of these LGD players who at this point are starting to become veterans. I guess Xiao It's pretty cold. He throws on the coat. Uh, not showing off that team jacket anymore. But ladies and gentlemen, it's time. The draft is now underway. Yeah, we can see first bands from LGD, Lanaya. Stay, denying one wait, of G's. Wait, you're gonna have to, that's something you're going to have to be careful about. You said from LGD, <laughs> but oh, they're both LGD. Uh, LGD China. <laughs> <laughs> you could just call them China and International. That might, whatever works for you, really. But uh, yeah, first banning TA, that's basically a respect ban to G. Yeah, G has been playing his TA to very much very good as all, as all the matches so I've seen him play in the official matches. It's really a good good and important band. If they want to run something like a melee hero in middle for Xiao, Xiao 8 to control the game, it's really important to ban out the TA. 
Right, because like we, like you talked about, you have to put pressure on that Xiao Wei in the early game, or come come mid game, and I, not even mid game. I mean, it's like it's like the six to eight minute mark where Xiao Wei just starts checking runes, gets that early smoke or TP scroll, and goes to gank. Oftentimes, you're safe lane or off lane solo, not where you'd expect in the tri lane, and it looks like it should probably be a tri lane for LGD International. Although, as I say that, they have run off lane on dying before, but. I mean, what do you think about this next level of picks? Yao gets his Magnus, but in response, they get the Nyx Assassin and Undying, some really powerful laning heroes. Yeah, they do get the powerful laning heroes, and LGD, CN, they do get their Magnus, uh, which, I, which I know that they will always favor the Magnus over NA. They like giving Yao, their, Yao his Magnus. <laughs> Who wouldn't? He's got one of the highest... If not the highest rate of success on that reverse polarity out of anyone I've seen... And it's, you know, most pros, they hit the majority of their RPs and they're usually pretty good, but he always hits them and it's always like three or four at least. You know, a two here RP, that's pretty much going to happen every time when you have skewer, but he always seems to find more than just two. It's always three or four and it's usually at the right time. But the question is, what's he going to be laning against and will he be able to get those levels because he'll be in the offlane almost certainly and Magnus isn't as strong in the offlane with the nerf to skewer. Well, that's what we thought when we played with L LGDCN in <laughs> the Asia, and they, they laned their Magnus in the middle lane, and they did uh, aggressive try lane with it. Oh, uh, you're right, you're right. Uh, they do normally uh, offlane it, though. We've seen them offlane it, I think, more overall, but they have made that adjustment where sometimes it goes mid, so you, you don't know. And then maybe Xiao 8 goes into the offlane, or, I mean, Silar's pretty much guaranteed to be in the safe lane. That's the one thing about playing against LGD China. You know, Sil I mean, once in a while, maybe solo mid lone Druid in certain matchups, like versus TA, but he's almost always safe lane, so it does make them a little predictable, and I wonder if the international squad can find a way to exploit that. But I think that with the recent nerfs to Skewer, Magnus can't really go to the off lane very effectively because of the range of it at level 1. We'll have he's to more see. Yeah, he's I mean, I agree with you. I think he's lane. Yeah, he's more preferred for the mid lane now. But, but they, they pick they, Brewmaster. They so, uh, could be a tri lane Brewmaster, I suppose? Could, uh, what do you yeah, think? Yeah, it could still be an aggressive tri lane and with Magnus in the middle lane. It, it would be a reasonably strong tri lane. They're a bit lacking in damage. They have the Telekinesis Lift and they have Clap, but if they want to get kills, they need more. And the concern is, what if their lane gets Nyx Assassin Undying plus one? I also want to point out there's a Keeper of the Light in the pool. Yeah, I'm not really sure if it's the right decision to go aggressive tri lane when your opponents have Nyx Assassin and Dirge on the field. It's not really a very smart thing to do. And and the problem is, Brewmaster's not really a Silar hero. It's not a hero that he plays often. So if you're not going aggressive with the Brewmaster, then what do you do with your lanes? I guess Brewmaster goes mid, you do put Mag in the off lane, and then he struggles there, and yeah. Pycat gets free far. I mean, what this is going to throw them into kind of a... A confusing laning state. Yeah. Oh, could, Winter, because, by the well, way, uh, your Dota TV audio is not audible. So if you go into your audio settings real quickly, uh, okay. just click on enable open mic and you should see the bar moving and should be green when you talk. Uh, there's an on button. It's on the left hand side. So hopefully yeah. that'll fix your audio. If it doesn't, guys, there are two minutes delay on the stream, but do let us know and we'll look to get it sorted out for you. So. While you're double checking, I think, I, I think it's okay. I'm not really sure. Though. If well, some people said they couldn't hear you, so try turning it off and then back okay. on again just to make sure. And I just, I just lost you. I'm checking. I'm checking. Okay. <laughs> okay, I think it should be fine now. Okay, guys, let us know if it's not. If it's not, we'll get a fix. Thank you to everybody tuning in on Dota TV. Hello to you all, by the way. Wow, actually, Darkseer was available the whole time. That's a. Pr this is a hero that the international squad loved to run, and they went for Shadow Demon instead. They went for that really strong tri lane support as well as just a defensive powerhouse, but they don't get the darks here. And now you see the international squad. They've got a definite flavor to their style. They okay. love these aggressive heroes. The ones that can get the early mech like the darks here, and then the solo mids that can find lots of kills like the Night Stalker and the Chinese are banning all those out. Yeah, I think that the reason being. Ducks here not opted by LGD in international was because they are, they were going to pick the Shadow Demon and they would leave the Dirge on the off lane with Nyx, Assassin and Shadow Demon being as their core supports of the game. We'll have to see. Uh, I mean, it, make, it makes sense what you're saying and hopefully because the audio... Because I've never seen them running a Dirge on the, the third row, carry in the safe lane. I've never seen them do it. 
it's 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 a hero that scales off pretty badly as the game goes on and what makes matters worse is LGD Internet or China almost always go for a hero that can, you know, get some physical DPS, and that's going to make the Tombstone pretty useless. So that's the one downside to the Undying pick is you generally know he's going to be in that off lane. Now, as we mentioned, he could be a solo there. That's something some teams do like to do. And Misery's Chen, the final one to get the ban. Yeah, LGD's, LGD China, they do like to run. Sometimes they are dirge on the off lane, uh, which you can see in one of the just games. They ran the dirge on the off lane against the Luna, 1v1, and Luna wasn't really farming too good against that lane. Yeah, she's not strong against those aggressive tri lanes. That's the weakness of Luna. She's okay, because she gives your team a bunch of damage, but she's squishy, she's got low range, she really needs levels. That's why we often see LGD International run her as a safe lane farmer, uh, and that aggressive tri lane, so the Pycat gets that 1v1. Uh, and they can put some pressure on the enemy safe lane, try to slow down Silar, and then he gets the early levels too. So we'll see, do they go for the Luna here? They actually ban out the Lifestealer, which is a pretty good hero against Luna, because you've got the magic immunity, and you're very, very tanky. I actually think they, there's a possibility of them picking out Luna now. We'll just have to wait and see. Yeah, they did pick it. They they know. <laughs> oh, they go for it, and now they ha they're the ones with the team fight. It'll come mid game to late game, they've got Panda ult. They've got maybe a tombstone that can be stolen by Rubik and the Maggle plus Luna. So what do you do if the LGD International? How do you try and respond to this? You really you really have to be very careful with what you are picking next because we, you're you're going to put the Dying. If you're going to put the Dying on the off lane against the Luna, you are pretty much. Go going to give the Luna a lot of space to farm during the early phase. But for the good thing about their lanes is Shadow Demon and Nyx Assassin plus one more carry would most likely be the stronger lane against Rubik, Brewmaster and one more support. So I'm being told that people can hear you, but it's unreliable. So what you need to do is go into your audio settings and you see that open mic threshold? Uh huh. You want to drag that, I believe it's to the left until you clearly see the, the green... To the left. Yeah. And you should see the green bar every time you talk, even if it's quietly. So I just stay on that screen for a moment and try talking for a bit and, and make sure it's fixed. Uh, you don't have to drag it yeah. all the way, though. Maybe just like halfway. Is it to the right or to the left? I, I think it it's to the left. It has always been in the halfway mark. Yeah, move me. it. Move it like uh, half. Move it to the left like a quarter of the way. Okay. I already done it. Okay, hopefully it's fixed, guys. Sorry about it. It's a little bit harder to troubleshoot with the two minutes delay, but we'll get it all sorted out for y'all soon. And in the meantime, the, the Chen was banned, but, I mean, in some ways, this Enchantress is a better pick for them anyway uh, okay. because they want to be aggressive, and so they get yeah, their hands on it. LGD International, they are revealing that they're going to run the Nyx Assassin as a solo mid already by picking the Enchantress. They're going How to use Shadow, Shadow, Shadow Demon and Enchant Enchantress as a dual support jungling together or roaming around. H how do you feel about that matchup? Who's the, who's the next going to be landing against here? I guess it's probably the Brewmaster? It's either the Brewmaster or the Magnus, which would also be quite decent for the Nyx Assassin. He has that mana burn to really hurt the Brewmaster or the Magnus in the lanes. Hmm. Interesting. And Nyx and Assassin... His mana burn makes it really annoying to lane against. Obviously, you can't really get aggressive on him. And that early level 6 Vendetta, LGD, they've got three squishy heroes between Luna, Lina, and Rubik. But the the one concern is they've got to make some early game. Like, their early game has to be good, or they're just going to lose come mid game. Yeah, it's going to be an aggressive try lane from LGD China with the Lina, Rubik, and Brewmaster, most likely. With the Magnus on mid lane and Luna on the safe lane. It's actually pretty much something that LGD in themselves like to do. What are they going to last pick? They're really taking their time with it. They don't have a carry yet. Yeah, they don't have a carry yet. I wonder what it is. What's even left in the pool? A Sven's band? I, I can't... I'm trying to think. Yeah, it's really... Maybe. What they have now is really limited. Taking look, I think, I'm taking a look at the pools right now. <laughs> And Clinks! Oh, oh that's Klinks. what... There you go. This is going to be oh, PyCat's oh. hero. They had a crazy game with Clinks. I think it was versus MUFC. Uh, and it was... Oh, who was it? It was Ohio's oh. Tinker. Oh, man, that was such an epic game. 
and PyCat, he had such a strong start, he got a really fast Orchid, but eventually the entire enemy team got Ghost Scepters, and there was just no way to deal with it, because they didn't have any magic damage. They have a little bit more of this game, but they pick the Clinks. Yeah, Ghost Scepter is definitely an item to get against the Clinks, because he doesn't really generally get the Fusal Blade to perch off the Ghost Form. Yeah, well, <laughs> they do have the Dawn Purge, like you said. Yeah, it's the only way you can survive it when the Clinks gets his Orchid up, like at the 14 minute mark, usually. Like, Fanic gets his Orchid up usually at the 10 to 14 minute mark, depending on how smooth Sealing his early game was. He started with a, a lot of stats as well as some regen, and who's he going to be late against? Probably the Mag, it looks like. LGD, let's see. Yao, early style I, shield, yeah, looks like it will be I think it's going to be the, the Mag, yeah, it's going to be the Mag on the offlane. So, along those lines, while we have a moment, let's go ahead and introduce our players. And good, the in-game sound is working. So we have Misery on that aggressive Trilane Enchantress Observer Ward already placed near the rune. We have 1437 on a Shadow Demon. And these guys love to go smoke gank mid as well. They don't always just sit in the Trilane. Although, and on Dying being there, he's pretty tanky. But yeah, Smoke and Sentry's picked up on him. We have Brax on the offlane, potentially Trilane on Dying. Oh, we can see here the Bone taking a few shots at the Magnus. Some early harassment. Yeah, I was happy to trade blows. Clinks yeah. is not that scary at level one. It's like what he gets. Oh, regen. <laughs> no harassment for you. Oh, yeah. Oh. Could have skewered him maybe up onto the cliff, but I'm not gonna think about uh, that. The range is too short to do it. Oh now. yeah, you're right. You're right. I keep on forgetting it got nerfed. Wow, Pycat, big mistake. He loses half his health almost instantly. Wow, he's really getting bullied. So yeah, on LGD CM we have Yao on his Magnus. Xiao 8 on the Brewmaster, SC on his Lina, DDC on the Rubik, and Sila on his carry Luna. And speaking of that trilane, it's for the moment we have the Enchantress trying to find her way into the jungle. It's already 40 seconds in, doesn't have a creep yet, and middle lane looks yes. pretty even so far. She's very worried of entering the opponent's jungle as they have a Rubik. You could chuck him up the hill and leave him there for a long period of time. So he was being very safe when he was trying to go up the hill. She does and have finally, tangos. Yeah, finally he decides to go back to his jungle. <laughs> well, uh, let's see what he can do here. It's an offlane mag who at the early levels could be ganked. Uh, Clink's not really the best for setting that up, but we'll have to see if he gets really lucky with creeps. Maybe he'll go on that. The mid lane brewmaster is going to be a tough kill as well, but that's the one thing LGD... That's why they really like these solos is they're always hard to kill solo. So even though they're melee, it's just not easy kills. They're so tanky. Yeah, I think the correct decision for Misery is to try to farm up some levels at the start in his own jungle first and then proceed on later to decide whether he should be doing conjoining his teammates up at bottom or controlling the top lane for the bone more so that he gets his orchid earlier or moving on to middle. Uh oh. Brax takes a little harassment, but he's pretty tanky. They're not gonna be able to bring him down. So how yeah, the boom master already has his bottle up already. And that's, even with Mono Burn, it, this is something I wanted to talk about in the draft. It's only so effective because it's got a long cooldown, and Xiao Wait is going to be bottle crowing a lot, and as well as having really the best, better pushing power in this lane. So I feel like it's at best an even matchup, if not slightly favoring Xiao Wait. Yeah, I think Brewmaster has the slight advantage due to having the clap to clear out the creeps and controlling the rune earlier. Well, and they got the first rune. <laughs> <laughs> does miss a couple creeps though. He's gonna miss at least one. I think it was two total. He does get yeah, back I think for the last two. It was two, two melee creeps. And this can make a difference because the brewmaster hit six first. He's got the panda ult and Nyx assassin. His vendetta even being slightly delayed. That's an escape mechanism. But more importantly, it's a potential way to kill. So Silar, is he being shut down? That's gonna be one of the big stories of this game. Ten and three, really not already right. level three as well. And, and you, yeah. can look, you can look at the ward placement by LGD International. So far, far out, the bottom ward. It's really, really, really smart of them. Because usually when you place it in front of the tower near it, you usually get the ward by a sentry from the opponent's side. Yeah, really smart from them. A little bit unpredictable with the warding. Here comes the smoke gank from Misery. He's got a centaur and a clapper. They do have great initiation with Shadow Demon. I, yeah, I think this is going to be good for LGD in if they can get a kill here and control the tri lane to limit the Luna's farm. Okay, they're going in now. Oh, this is going to be it. I don't know that he gets out here. Tombstone is already dropped. Only level one, but good damage yeah. coming forth. The creeps leading the way. The Luna's going to be dead. Luna's going to be dead. First blood? And this was something they definitely needed. Now DDC gets blocked in by his creeps. Yeah. They'll be okay, though. 
Yeah, it's a very important kill to have, and now that with that, the enchanters that he could run freely in the Sentinel's jungle and control the control the farm of the Luna a lot. He can also dive pretty easily when he gets like two good creeps behind the tower with the Shadow Demon Disrupt as an engagement. And they have Undying, who can just be on the front soaking up tower shots, slowing everyone down with the zombies, and yeah, being he can just chuck, chuck the tomb down and dive the tower. And LGD International or LGD China, they don't really, they don't have that much. They've got telekinesis and they've got light strike array, but it's going to be hard to actually lock down everybody. They don't have a big AOE stun like ice pads, uh, especially with the creeps or enchanters. It's going to bring in with. So it seems like the in-game audio is better. Maybe no, drag it just a tiny bit more to the left, but I think it should be good. The one concern for me is Yao's getting a ton on this top lane. He's 26 and four. He's out farming Piecat, and this yeah, he's doing very well on the top lane. And he's gonna have RP soon, so he can turn around this tri lane. And I think they haven't gotten enough yet out of that bottom lane. Well, I I think he could just hold a TP and TP to bot. Oh, there's gonna be a fight now. Yeah, DD gets netted up now. Wow, look at the burst. They bring him down in a hurry, but can they deal with this angry and dying? He doesn't have mana for another oh, doesn't have mana. Oh, now he oh, does. Oh, he's gonna be in trouble. He's gonna be in trouble. Oh no, they overextend, and this is a lineup that has to do well in the laning phase. Meanwhile, middle lane, Xiao Wei going for that rune top. There's no mana on G, so G harasses him, but can't quite kill him. This is looking you... better and better That's... for LGD China. LGD China was able to engage there because you did the ward they had on the left-hand side, just right above the river that spotted the... Shadow Demon coming in, and they were able to pick him up, ping him off before he casted any of his spells. Yeah, they ha they they do have quite a bit of burst damage if they can isolate the Shadow Demon, because you know that disruption he can't use it defensively when he's chain stunned. It was really crucial that they got that kill. If the dis disruption would have gone off from either the Rubik or the Lina first, they would be able to turn it, get the kill first, and the Luna would not be able to farm like how is he farming right now. Actually, pretty yeah, she is farming pretty well, but like you said, it's because they turned that fight around. Now she's left alone in the lane. Misery, misery. He's, he's going behind the tower. Shao I don't sees think it. He, I don't think he can get it. And, so it was realizing something was wrong. Yeah, he has his all up, but no mana. He's going to go back to heal up. Well, as far as gold goes, it's pretty even. Oh, actually, no, it's not that even. The Radiant with almost a thousand gold lead. And I, it's, oh. oh, reverse polarity. Oh, Pycat's oh. low. He doesn't have mana oh, for Shadow Walk. Oh, that was very, very good kill by Yao. He didn't have mana for Shadow Walk. That was so smart by Yao. He initiates. It probably would, might have gotten the kill anyway, but it wouldn't have been guaranteed. That way it uh, was. He had to guess the, the, the path. The bone was running if he had a go skeletal walk up and try to land his shockwave, but he didn't. And it was an easy shockwave oh, to land. Oh my god, look at it. Sentry ward down behind the tower. Oh, G's oh, standing. They see him. They see him. There's no RP to counter gank. There's no eclipse oh, yet. But this could It's still... gonna be bad. It's gonna be bad. Here comes here comes the mag. The... Yao is sleeping in. Uh oh. Mag joins the fight. And he's gonna die. This is looking pretty bad. Uh, they give up the kill, they also they lose two heroes. Now Brax wants to TP out Silar. Can he find him? Oh, the as well. Oh god, they're just getting destroyed right now. That's four heroes on the converging on the bottom land. lane. He's not going to land the clap, I think. It's too fast for him. They, no oh, skewer. He will. Oh. Wow, they drove him into the trees and he took a slightly longer path. That allows Yao to get in range for the clap. Or, uh, Xiao Wei to get in range. It was very good react reaction from all the, the Magnus and the Panda. This is this is what we did not see from DK yesterday. Was those really early sentry wards in the lane uh, when they were up against four loves nicks? And it's exactly how early was that? I mean, this is to put a sentry ward behind your tower like that. The nix was off the map for maybe 20 seconds. That is some really quick reactions by the supports, and they had to plan that in advance to have the sentries there. G comes in mid. Uh, yeah, they they do do it uh, all of the time. Those Chinese teams they have a sentry up, getting getting ready for the NA's gank. And when the mid got, when the mid solo calls out that NA is missing, the sentries will be dropped to protect the carry in the safe lane. And they put it behind the tower, which is the perfect place yeah. to put it. It was very very smart by them. It's either going to be a ward behind. They might spot a ward behind. Oh, there's going to be a fight. No. It guts the haste room for the NA. Well, top lane, Pycat still struggling to to get yeah. something going here. He do, he's getting the levels. He's up to level eight. But the Orchid is delayed by the fact that he died earlier. His CS pretty much dead even with Mag and 
you know, this is just Mag being really strong in certain matchups. Some heroes can beat him 1v1 now, and if you put pressure on him, he's not good at getting away, but if he gets to be aggressive, he's pretty much still the same hero, and I don't, I feel like they gave up a lot in that lane. They are going to stop pressuring the tier 1, but this Klinx's Orchid being a little bit slower, that gives Luna more time to farm, it gives Xiao 8 more time to farm, and Xiao 8 up to 1100 gold, maybe he'll even rush the Blink Dagger. You know, when you, when you pick a Klinx, and you expect him, the game plan usually is to expect him to win his lane a lot, but it's not happening for LGD in at the moment, and it's really bad for them. Uh-oh, Undying gets picked up bottom, and that offlane Undying can be very tanky sometimes, but those early deaths are really hurting him, and only sitting on boots and a statue, it has the levels, but goes down, and that Luna, with the max the Lunar Blessing, almost about to come out, already three points in it, uh, and they're ready Bottom it. tower, they took the bottom tower as well, it's gonna be a really Really, really good uh, good for them at the moment, the gold graph. Mid lane, they're gonna go in on the mag, trying to bring him down. Soul disrupted, and then Soul Catcher. He does he have doesn't a have mana. He doesn't have mana the NA anymore. You're right, no arcane boots. Normally we'd see them out by now, but... Radiant just, you know, dying earlier, attack. just setting him back. His CS shows that he, he was not actually doing very well at, at the mid lane as well. And with that death, he really slowed his arcane a lot. It's like, you, you know, it's like we talked about. That's a lane that Panda has a bit of an edge, and even though there's mana burn, you just bottle Crow, and it doesn't They're gonna matter. go for bottom, they're gonna go for bottom, Undying. The beam to start things up, and with the telekinesis. Easy, Easy kill. kill. And Pycat is starting to get a little more room to push, but I don't think trading works for LGD International. They're a lineup that needs to do more than trade. They need to just win fights, and right now they're not doing uh, it. But they are losing a lot out at, after the early phase, and that's the best thing he could hope for right now. Because LGD China, they have all the advantage in the levels due to the early kills, and it's really difficult for LGD in to engage on them right now. Bottom lane again, 1437 dropping low. Here's the disruption oh. on Silar. He will get away. Nice play by him, but you know, even so, he's just running back to base. Nobody even scratched on the Chinese side. Yeah. They were lucky to escape uh, with the Shadow Demon, but even even being that said, they are really far behind right now because of the early game, that, which they lost the tri lane at bottom, and it cost them a lot. Sala wasn't being shut down at the early phase, he has 57 last hits right now, it's really not too bad, considering the fact that he has been put up with a tri lane. And he's up to 2.4k, we may see that BKB rush from him. Uh, because if he is a BKB, how do LGD deal with them? They've got the Demonic Purge, but that just slows them down. A lot of nuke damage, even oh, they're going on. He, they're going on the Undying again. Yeah, he drops it's gonna the... be a Laguna, it's gonna be dead. <laughs> oh wow, Laguna Blade, and it's only got that 70 second cooldown, so they get the kill. And this Undying, this is where he starts to feel really useless, and especially with Luna already having level 4 Lunar Blessing. Soon we're gonna see Mag having points in power. The Tombstone's just gonna melt. Yeah, and the mag is going to get a mag. He's good. He he has his buckler now and 400 gold. Not too far away from his mag. When they when the mag has his mag, they are going to stick and take down towers. And what do you, so? What do you do if you're LGD International? Like they're this is pretty awful for them. This position they're in, it's they don't they, have the better they have late to game. do. They don't have to do what they are doing right now. Try to smoke gangs and try to pick someone off. But there's a sentry right there in the lane, very smartly placed by LGD China. I wonder if they were watching the map. Nobody pinged just yet, but it doesn't matter. They yeah. back off anyway. They are co committing too many resources to gang now. It's not really good, too good for them. And when there's no one else in the map, it's really hard to gang a very disciplined team like LGD C. And they would like the supports would like tell everyone, no one's on the map. Everyone play safe. They will try to farm near each other as as, as possible so that they could help out each other if someone else got ganged by the NA. Xiao has got his blink, I think. It's on the courier. Yes, it is. Another yes. big teamfight item for them. And like you said, the mech is also coming very soon. But they haven't used, they haven't used any of his panda speeds, if I'm not mistaken, to 12 minutes. That almost makes me, of... that makes me more scared for LGD International, because they haven't even yeah. had to deal with the panda split. They are going to take this mid tower now, since it's very low. I don't think LGD in can fight at all here. They have to give up this tower and try to find a trade-off at bottom lane. They are going to go for that trade, but it's not easy. There is Eclipse, there is the TP Panda ult, Mag ult. They're, oh, they're going to get, they're going to get flanked right at the side. The Panda's, the Panda and Magnus is coming from the left. Here comes the backup. Four heroes. Be a big, big RP, big RP here now. Maybe, maybe. Can Yao find the angle? Not just yet. 14. Looking for the opening. Oh. Well, Shadow Demon. 
I think they're pretty happy uh, with that. They, uh, they could have lost happy. a lot more. Yeah, they could have lost more and just losing your support is really a good thing from that situation. So, so Pycat getting close to his Orchid, but what can he do with this Orchid? Like, who's the easy kill right now? I don't know how you're gonna find those when everybody's 5 manning on LGD China. Uh, it's really hard for him to pick off kills because of the early lane advantage they got from the bottom lane winning so hard. It's really hard to even kill one of their supports if they stick together and have sent constantly having sentries up. I wouldn't be surprised if they get an early gem maybe in another 2 or 3 minutes. Yeah, you're up again. That's something we we haven't actually talked about. Nyx Assassin and Clinks. Yeah, Clinks. They have both heroes that rely a lot on their uh, invisibilities. And, and a gem and oh. then just group up as five. And the BKB is almost up on Luna. Uh, that I don't think they'll be able to get anything from this smoke gang. They have and he's using his vendetta now, going into the mid lane. Trying to catch the Luna. They might get it. Oh, they might. Okay. G's going to start this off. He's got to get in range for that impale. Here we go. Silar may fall to this. Oh. Tombstone gets dropped. An important it's gonna, kill. Yeah. It's going to be a quick, quick kill. Here comes the smoke. Oh, they really, yeah, they really needed that gang. And they have to, they have to run now. <laughs> they got to run. Shao waits on the hunt. This panda is oh, angry. Oh, he caught out the undying. Yeah, Brex. Brex gets Laguna down. <laughs> that Laguna is just getting them every single kill. And they lose the Luna. They do get the trade on dying. LGD International have to be happy with that. But even when they're getting a kill, it's not just a kill and then back off for free. They still lose one. Oh, and one thing I wanted to point out as, as well is with, with that Lina in the field, Klings has to be very careful every time when he pops up, tries to solo kill someone in the fight. Because if he doesn't see the Lina and the Lina gets his Laguna and spells off the Klings before he has his BKB, it's really going to be hard for him to get any pickoffs in the fight. And you're talking about BKB, he just got his Orchid. It's not even that early. It's not yeah, he that has bad. To farm, he has to farm up a lot more before he can join the fights. And while he's farming up, LGD China are getting all their team fight items. The mech is out on Mag. Next will probably be the Blink Dagger. They're going to go on him top. No, he will back off in time. But now this is... They've got the mech. They've got the BKB. They just start 5-manning. And I don't it's know... Gonna, it's going to be 5-man Dota from now on. I mean, the mech and the BKB. And I don't know how they deal with it if they're LGD International. There's there's Kling, nothing... Klings and NA can't really help in the team fight now. Those... They have to, take have to take trades. They can't fight this at top. If they can trade, they'll be pretty satisfied with that outcome. But you already uh, see the TP look, mid. Look at Xiao, ba, Xiao 8. He was very smart. He TP'd middle first. He knew that trading was the only good thing that LGD in could have done. And they could most likely get the top tower without even trading. Xiao 8 taking some harassment mid. Now purged up. They want to bring him down uh, soon. He used his split. The Panda split. That was a really good bait. Uh, they baited his split out. I don't think they're going to get much about from this Panda split. And they, oh, and Klinks is TPing top to defend the tower. Yeah, I was waiting though, and he's got that blink RP. Oh, no, sorry, not that blink, but he's got that RP. Will he go in on this? There's only two heroes here. Now everybody's coming top, there's no vision. Uh, he, might, he might go in. This looks like it could be very bad. And yeah, LGD, LGD China switching up to top again very really quickly after they defended the middle tower. Oh, there's gonna be a fight here. Two TPing in, and they are flanking from the side. Oh, PyCat will go with Fizz. The Dirge is down already by the Eclipse. And then TP'd out behind. Oh, the RP. He stopped the RP from, from casting. Wow, pretty big stuff. And yet, nonetheless, they lose three. Now G, likely to fall next. He gets brought down, like you said, five-man Dota. And that's after wasting the Panda ult. Then they five-man, and they wipe four. It shows you how strong their lineup is at five-man Dota. Even without the Panda speed, they could take the fight so easily. And Kling's almost died there as well. To it wasn't a very good fight for them. They shouldn't, in my opinion, they shouldn't have taken that fight. They should have just tried to trade the mid tower or the bottom tower. There was no way they would be able to be win that fight. I don't think they realized what was happening at the time. They didn't have any vision of that top rune, and the creep wave was pushed out. I don't think they knew that LGD was going to go for top tower, and by the time they did, by the time they reacted, it was too late. Yeah, they didn't have vision. You were right. And PyCat, he's got the orchid, but what can he really do with this? This is... He no openings. He can't really do much with the Orchid right now. LGD are just playing so smart right now, they're denying him the use of his Orchid. Constantly taking towers as 5, so that the bone can't pick off anyone. And the only thing that he could do right now is, the best thing for his team is to try to take a trade off towers really quickly to boost up their economy. That economy needs a shot in the arm, and the push will happen bottom. There's, I think they're just, are they going to defend this? They're too late. No, Silar's here. Oh, they are going to try to 
it's oh he's gonna get it I think oh denied wow well played. that's first a clinks too that's a very good hero for bringing down towers searing arrows do work on them and you yeah. gotta wonder when does LGD just go for the tier twos RP is up panda ult is coming soon I think they can just go again yeah they can but I'm kind of surprised they haven't got the jam up to control the map as yeah, well for the NA and the clinks. Probably it'll be coming up quite pretty soon. Um, after they take on the last two tire outer tire two towers of LGD International. Well, bottom lane, they're starting to group up four heroes there, and now the panda joining the, the fight as well. Yeah, uh, the bottom tower is really low now, only at five hundred health. They'll be able to take it really easily. There's no way they can defend that. They've gotta let yeah. that go. LGD in are trying to go for the mid tower now. Get a trade off. And Xiaowei, he really wants to defend every tower. You see him keep on thinking about going mid, but I think yeah, to trade the tier 2 is fine. About it. He was thinking about it, he was like standing at the river and waiting, <laughs> deciding whether he should trade. Yeah, they can go up high ground right now. They're going up right now and he's... to deal some damage to the tower. And the glaive so good in this situation, bouncing through, killing the creep wave, bringing the tower low, and now the blink skewer. Oh, he blink skewer. Very nicely done. And how do you stop this? How do you stop this? Tombstone was stolen. DDC, that's a Radiant Tombstone. One yeah, more team. I just noticed, just noticed it. It's gonna be... I don't think they can defend the Rax anymore. Here we go. Be very G's got a blink. He blinks in, but he doesn't find the opening. Now Spike Carap has stolen. They pull him back in, and he's gonna melt. He's gonna, he's gonna melt. They can't, they can't defend this Rax anymore. It's gonna be a Rax for LGDCN. And once they lose one, how do they come back? Oh, the crit, the crit. <laughs> got that Pandas. One hit. Strong Panda. And that's only level 1 Drunken Brawler, that's like the lowest chance ever. Yeah. The, the damage remains the same, but the chance is lower at all levels. Lower at level 1. Right. And now shaoi has got his Ags, pretty much. So Ags up on him, Manta up on Silar, and RP wasn't even used. Unbelievably, they 5-man, they don't even need RP. I don't think LGD in can come back to this game anymore. They're too far behind already. As long as LGD CN keep everything safe, they don't take too much risk, the game should be the last. Yeah, they're so far behind in gold and experience. In team composition, they like the team fight. Even as far as raw DPS goes, I don't think Clinks, even if he was equal, would outcarry LGD because they've got the Empower plus the Luna, which is a ton of physical damage for everyone. Even the supports are so rich already. For Rubik and Lina, they have a 4 staff soon and a Go Scepter up on Lina. Uh, Lina is a gem right now. Finally! Like you yeah, said, finally. I would have liked to see this sooner, but it, they're still winning in spite of it. And now Shao yeah, is. They're gathering up in middle, waiting for the Luna, and the Luna just picked up his Manta style. Manta style and BKB, and they already got one Rex and a pose, now it just gets easier. I don't see LGD in defending this tower at all. They need a miracle. They need more than a miracle. <laughs> <laughs> what's, what's more than a miracle? <laughs> They need a huge mistake from uh, LGDCN. Uh, I'm trying to think of an analogy here. Uh, it's probably a miss, miss reverse polarity. Maybe that that not, might not be enough as well because there's, there's still the split to to help them win with the team fight. There's a split and the eclipse as well. Yeah, we have a bit of a pause here, so just switch over to the Chinese stream. Maybe they'll show us some camera shots. So if you're LGDN, this game looks really bad. You're probably losing this game one. Uh, you gotta bounce back. You, it's a very tough group. DK lost their first floor love, but that only makes things scarier because you gotta figure DK is gonna be practicing and fighting extra hard. This is looking pretty grim. Uh, losing this game one, they do have to bounce back. They cannot afford to just lose this series 2-0. Yeah, they cannot afford. The group, the group is very, very hard and every loss it hurts a lot for every team. So this game, when we look at it, I still feel like LGD International could have could have come out ahead in the landing stage, but that early engagement that you point out with PyCat trading blows, uh, even after you got the regen rune, he tried to trade with Yao, and Yao just punished him. Then he fell behind in the lane. We do have the game unpaused. Yeah. The Chinese yeah, Mac has Mac has a stout shoot at the start. Okay, the fight's starting. Yeah, G just gets assassinated. Yao skewers forward. Catches. Gotta get, he's gonna get another kill. Yeah, yeah this Shadow is looking demon. bad. What's that? And yeah, as you were saying at the start, uh, Bone tried to trade hits with the Mac, and Mac has more HP and armor at the start compared to the Bone, and with the Stout Shield as well, it really helps him trade blows with the weaker range hero at the start. Yeah, Clinks, you don't really want to trade until you're like level 5. When you have that level 3 Searing Arrow, then you really hurt, but 
And the Not GG. The there you go. So a pretty a pretty impressive performance really from, from LGD China this first game. Yeah, their heroes really rely on them really doing well at the early phases with the Klings winning his lane and the uh, Enchanters getting more kills than he would have liked. But it all went wrong for them. It was that one fight bottom when they had the Sentry Ward there. That really sealed the deal. It was also be because of the before the fight. Remember me mentioning the ward placement which allowed them to engage on the Shadow Demon first before, before him being able to disrupt them because he was coming by the side to flank them with the Enchantress and the Rubik got the lift off first and they were, they were able to burst the Shadow Demon down first before they could even engage on them. That was really one of the few critical points at the early phase at the 3v3 bottom. Yeah, we will get our final scoreboard for anyone who wants to see it. 20 to 3, the final score of this series. Of course, it is a best out of three. So LGD China, the ones who are a bit more experienced, they've been here before. They take the first game. Uh, the second lobby should be up. So if you want to make sure that you're joining, that would be pretty good. Yeah. Uh, actually, don't see it yet, but hopefully it'll come up soon. So any, any additional thoughts, any closing words of wisdom? Or what do you think about this game, too? What should we see out of LGD International to try and deal with the Chinese? I think they should try to pick something more like closer to their star which they showed before in the Jazz tournament which they mainly focus on the Luna, the Night Stalker. Probably we'll see something like that in the sec second game. <laughs> uh, so I'm just laughing at the stream chat right now. Uh, guys, don't worry, game two hasn't started yet. Once it does, we'll let you know. But, uh, I'll, I'll, well, it looks like we're going to have a bit of a break before game two. So if anything else interesting kicks off, we'll, we'll go back to the Chinese stream. But for now, guys, that's going to wrap it up for game one. Game two is coming soon, so stay tuned for that. This is a best out of three. This is your G League coverage brought to you by Beyond the Summit. I am LD, and of course, he is Winter. And Winter, before we go to the break, do you have a, a Twitter or anything you want to plug? Uh, I don't have my Twitter. I don't really use my Twitter, but my Facebook. Uh, I, I do use my Facebook a lot, my page Winter, you can see. Uh, so am I supposed to share it to you? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's, that's okay. Um, but guys, be sure to follow Winter once he does get a Twitter. Really great to have you aboard for the analysis and the unique perspective of someone who's been there before. When we come back, Game 2, LGD Int versus China will be underway. Stay tuned for that. <laughs> 